guys. Uh, I thought it was about time I did a review of my favourite sleeping bag. This one. I really like the Dura 2. It's probably the best bag I've ever had. And I say that with, you know, quite a lot of confidence. A couple of things that I'm not so keen on, which I'll come to in a minute, but generally it takes a bit of beating. As you can see, you can squash it on, with a compression sack quite well. It's uh, what football size, that sort of thing. It's got some weight to it. It's probably, I think, even 1.5, 1.7 kilos around that sort of area so it's not silly heavy it's not like them big arctic bags it's smaller and lighter um, but a lot of similar features but i mean that's quite respectable obviously i wouldn't store it like that because it doesn't no good at all but that's how i would compress it to get in the bag when i'm going out uh, normally i just hang them up on a hanger loose for normal storage but uh, yeah I'll open him up and give you my thoughts. Right, first off, the compression sack. Really well made, really strong. Uh, it enables you to wind down these straps with quite a lot of force. It's under a lot of tension, as you can see, but it puts up with it because it's good, it's strong. Off some of that pressure. That's its sort of non compressed size, sort of twice as big. Now, I suppose I should go through negatives. Only two, well, only two that I've found. I've been using one of these for a year now, all year round. First thing, according to their website, minus five comfort rating. Well, if you're gonna use it in minus five, you're a better man than me. I think that's optimistic. Let's put it that way. Free season, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Uh, but once it gets down below sort of five degrees, four degrees, it's going to start being a little bit on the chilly side, I find, personally. You might be different. The way round this, uh, if it's really cold, I've got a very cheap summer bag, which I'll put over the top. Two layers, warm, no problem at all. The other thing is if I'm using it like in a bivy, again, you've got a second layer, you're trapping more heat. It's not as bad. But just to use as a normal bag, shall we say, just on top of your sleep mat, I wouldn't want to be in it at minus five. Just my thoughts. I know it's, it's designed primarily for hammock camping, and I suppose if you've got the under blanket, that might help an awful lot. Personally, I don't have one. Uh, so, minus five, not for me, not on its own. With addition of other kit, yes, I can see it working. But that's just my thoughts. Just in case you rush out and think it's gonna be a great winter bag, Maybe, maybe not. The only other issue I had you've got your shoulder baffle, which works really well. Cinches in around your shoulders, keeps the heat in, 
fine. But the drawstrings, it's a generous size bag. When it's open, you know, it's wide. So the baffle is long. Consequently, the string is long. Once you've cinched it right in around yourself, you get about this much string either side floating about. And being a central zip, that means that you get like two big long lengths of spaghetti flapping about in your face. Now, initially, I got over this with the little Velcro bit here. Designed to, uh, if you can see that, designed to keep the baffle in place. You don't really need that bit because you've got your zip and everything up here. It's not really going to separate that much anyway. So I would pull the strings in and then make them in a bit of a bundle, stick them here, melt crow it in place. But that was a bit of a fiddle, a bit of a faff. So I'm still in two minds what to do, but the ultimate answer, I did think about running a thin piece of shock cord through here. So it's all self-gathering. But what I've done temporarily, I've cinched it into more or less how I like it. It's got the little um, stop lock things, whatever you like to call these. I've cinched it to roughly where I like it, cut the ends off the string. It's not an issue that it's gathered because of the central zip. It just means as you zip the bag up, it sort of self-gathers around you. You can always add a little bit more and you only have this much string rather than this much string. That's really my only two negatives. It's a lovely bag. And to be perfectly honest, if something happened to this, I'd order another one straight away. Wouldn't even look elsewhere. I really like it. So don't get put off by my two negative comments. They're things you can get around, not the end of the world, and for general use, like most people can, you know, summer, free season, not everyone is mad enough to be out in the winter like some of us are. It's not going to fail you, you're going to like it. Generous hood. I tend not to do the hood up around my head that much. Uh, I tend to put my inflatable pillow in it. Use the drawstrings to gather just to hold the pillow in place. Works fine for me. Might be different for you. But it's good. It's a generous bag. This is only the regular. And I know they say it's up to, I think, 44 chests, something like that, the regular. But I'm 44. Chest, my age, I wish. Um, and it's huge. When I was zipping up, I can quite happily go from a back to sleeping on the side and roll within the bag without the bag moving. There's that much room. So, yeah, it's plenty of size, plenty of room. Got your big pockets on the inside. You want to stick your wallet and phone and that sort of rubbish that you take out your pockets, out your trousers when you get in. Works well. Waterproof footbox. For those of you that haven't camped, like myself sometimes, you know what a faff it is trying to get in a sleeping bag that's laying in the hammock. At least with this, you can put it on the wet floor, step into it, zip yourself up, and then just sit in the hammock and get yourself in. Same material inside and out. In theory, well, slightly lighter stuff, it's softer inside, but still waterproof inside. In theory, you can get in it with your boots on. I wouldn't, personally, because I don't like the idea of all the dirt in there. But, yeah, if you're in that sort of situation, you could get in it with your boots on. zip is two-way, but 
so I can't undo the bottom bit at the moment. We just ignore that, shall we? It's a two ways in. Should undo the bottom. I never do. That's probably why. Why well, it doesn't want to work? It doesn't want to work for a uh, for lack of use. Um, so yeah, if you're hot in the summer, you can vent it if you unzip the bottom from the bottom. You can vent round your middle, or as I tend to do, if I'm getting too hot, I just unzip the top down to you know sort of chest height, flip the sides open, let some heat out. But I don't really. Apart from the string issue that I mentioned, and the fact that I think they're a bit optimistic with their temperature rating, everything else I absolutely love. I think now, if, if you buy them, they're around £60, depending on where you get it. Whether you've got a discount code and all those sort of things, as you know, prices can vary greatly, but around £60. For 60 quid, I don't think that you'll get a better bag with this many features for that money. As I say, I absolutely love it. Used it for a year, not this particular one, but I've used this model for a year. Never really found fault with it. If you fancy a three seat and sleep, start that again, shall we? If you fancy a three season, that's my view, sleeping bag, that's okay for hammock, tent, whatever sort of use you want, a bit of an all rounder, you could do an awful lot worse than the Dura 2. See you soon, guys.